this week, well, I think it was Wednesday, Deborah took had me meet with her at Carl Cheswick 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 yeah. Cheswick Char, uh, Carl and Joan Cheswick's uh, organic farm here in West Asheville, and he's the director of the B School. Um, unofficial, yeah. Unofficial yeah. director of the B School. <laughs> And I, I had it was I had such a profound realization that I had an anxiety attack that night because I began to realize the more I hang out with the beekeepers and hear about what's happening in the hive and with the bees themselves, the more I understand about all these symbols that I have gathered around the frame drum, the om belows, the buzzing beehive at the center of reality, these practices that I've managed to come across in my life, Brahmari, Pranayama, yogic, ancient yogic practice, Brahmari means bee in Sanskrit, and this practice, Brahmari, I've been teaching for many years, um, and which is what we're going to do right now, has a profound effect on the whole mind and body, but it's a particular heart chakra practice. Heart chakra has 12 petals, and within that double, uh, triangle, the double uh, star of David, in the center is the little hexagon that the bees make. And Brahmari <laughs> is said to be a particular practice of, for opening the heart chakra. The heart chakra's name is the anahat, which means the unstruck sound, the sound behind all of reality the sound that we can't actually hear. It's too subtle and too fine to be audible. But the sound that we can hear that is the closest to this inaudible sound is bees buzzing. Traditionally, that's what students are told to listen for within their own consciousness, the sound of bees buzzing. And that is an echo of the anahat, the unstruck sound, that actually creates all of reality, that sustains all of reality. So, oh, and there's just more and more symbols and these old texts, like this text from Sappho where she's invoking Aphrodite, who's one of the ancient great bee goddesses, and I realized as I studied the text, she's calling the bees, is what she's calling. She's calling Aphrodite. She's saying, leave Crete, come here, come to the holy place. Come to the sacred grove. Your altars are smoking with incense. Cold water sings through the fruited trees. Everything is shaded under a, bow a bower of roses. And an enchanted sleep drops down. Of course, that's the larvae dreaming in their little <laughs> hexagons. Uh, out around the temple, a meadow of spring flowers is blooming. So everything that the bees need is here. And she calls Aphrodite, come Aphrodite, pour your libation into our golden cups. Mm -hmm. And I added a final line, mm -hmm. bring your Melissa's to life. Mm -hmm. And the Melissa's are the bees. So as I hang with the beekeepers and I study the ancient texts and the ancient symbols, I realized on Wednesday that we are touching on the roots of the sacred in the bee yard. We're touching on the root of human beings' oldest spiritual practices, the roots of the later organized religion. And this is, it was almost a frightening realization that we are, it's like we have double back. We are going back into the center of the hive to understand ourselves and to understand what spiritual practices really are, which is being present, being calm, leaving all disturbing emotion outside being focused on the present moment. But then I think there is something even more about the bees that transform you, and then the substances that they create. I went through, I started at Deborah's hive in her yard of being stung um, on points that my 
acupuncturist had picked out for me to try to stop the growth of this malignant tumor. And it was the first thing that really began to shift my immune system back and to bring back the energy of inspiration, which I had lost, and the kind of weakening that goes on in the mind and body when there's a malignant tumor growing in your body. So this was a shift, and it was right before I went uh, and had the tumor removed surgically. But it's what shifted my whole energy, and I think which is what has enabled me to, to come through that period. And then working with the substances out of the hive, the pollen, the propolis, the royal jelly, and the honey, but taking it in a good way, not um, taking it away from the bees. Yeah. Which is something that we have to keep in mind also. So now we're going to do Bromery. And what, what I want you to really tune in is that first practice that we started this morning of connecting down into the earth synergy. You want your spine straight, rooted in the earth synergy, feeling the top, the crown of the head open to the energy of the heavens. Feeling yourself as the connecting principle between heaven and earth. And we're going to take a deep breath and we're going to begin to practice Brahmari. And if you haven't done this with me before, just listen and then start to try to join in. And then I'll give you more details of how to do the sound. We're buzzing, we're not humming, we're not going mm. It's a real buzz. And one way that you can start to get that is open your mouth and do that. You probably did this as a child. <laughs> Good. So now let's try to do the buzz of Bromery. Deep breath. Bromery is traditionally given by a guru to students who have too many thoughts, mm -hmm. which is probably most American. It's a way to calm the mind, to relax the whole mind-body. In India, it's now being used for women going into labor. They're taught to do Bromery, and they're able to be far more relaxed as they go through the process of having a child and take far less drugs. It helps with um, insomnia. Uh, it actually improves your hearing. And it might be that it's quieting the mind so much that we actually can hear something besides the patterns of our thoughts and our minds. But it also might be something actually physically happening, the vibration, that I can definitely hear better after I've done Bromery. So let's do some rounds and then sit in the silence that comes afterwards. 